Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to the amazing beauty of creation. Today we're going to talk about a creature, a little bug that's so amazing that Allah Ta'ala decided to name an entire chapter of the Quran after it. Now think about it. How awesome is this bug that Allah Ta'ala names an entire surah after it and yet, and yet, I think you know what I'm talking about, right? Yet, when we see these things, we go for a picnic, we lay out our food, we sit on the mat, and instantly we get invaders. What am I talking about? I'm talking about ants. I'm talking about a namal. Allah Ta'ala has named the entire surah to namal after ants. Now, remember the point that we, we mentioned before, right? When Allah Ta'ala mentions something in the Quran, already that's really great that shows something really great and awesome about the thing that he's mentioning. But now to name an entire surah after an end is even greater. So there must be something something about ends that warrants them having this honor. Now in that specific surah, we know the uh, incident that Allah Ta'ala refers to specifically where he says that uh, Sulaiman alayhi salam, uh, King Solomon is moving with his army, his huge giant army, massive army through a valley. And a little ant sees the army approaching and then it goes and warns all the other ants that here comes uh, Suleiman Ali Salam and his, and his army, they're coming. So you better go into your burrows and uh, be safe. So this little ant went across all the other ants and warned them and in so doing, save the entire, uh, well, the, not the entire colony, but all the ants that were on the surface because they all um, went back down into their burrows and um, they, they were saved. And uh, as Suleiman alayhi salam, as he rode past or walked past this, uh, uh, what was happening here this, this, with this ant, he, he heard its, its uh, call to the other ants. And remember, Suleiman alayhi salam could understand the language of animals and bugs, which is also something really, really amazing. But anyways, I digress. So Suleiman alayhi salam heard this ant uh, talking and he smiled. So Allah Ta'ala mentioned this uh, this incident in Surah tun naml So that's the one thing uh, about ants that uh, that's really, truly amazing. Ants are very, very communal in nature. They They actually look out for each other as a community in a hive. Now, Tala will tell us everything about ants and uh, you know their, their colonies and their communities. But an ant colony is one of the most amazing things that still baffles scientists. And what's the most baffling thing about uh, ant colonies is the way they operate. It works as if they have one single brain. It's as if one single brain is controlling that entire colony. So... Tala, tell us, when you look at an ant colony, what what types of ants actually, uh, or how many ants do we typically get into a colony and, and in a colony, and what sort of ants actually make up uh, a typical ant colony? Okay, so ant colonies can consist of under 100 ants in some species, and in some species, they can go up to 300 million ants in a single colony. Board. Whoa, 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 hold on there. 300 million. I think you need to fact check that. Is that is that true? Have you fact checked that? That is 100% true. Wow. Okay. Now, most ants build their colonies underground, so they're out of sight. They'll d- uh, dig little ant holes. But some species are known to, uh, like termites, they build their houses in wood parts and some of them build their, uh, their colonies in trees. And what about these ant hills you see when we go and drive through nature reserves? Aren't those above ground? Those are above ground partially and they extend underground as well. See, they oh. excavate from the bottom and move to the top okay. and build. Okay, so let me get this straight. So you got your, uh, your your hill on the top, but that's like almost the tip of the iceberg. This is a, there's a, you're saying there's a whole lot more underneath. In some species, yes. Oh, wow, okay. Now, ant colonies can go up to at least seven meters deep. Seven meters deep? Seven meters. Mind-boggling. That's like, you know... Uh, three to four people standing on top one another and you got uh, that's how deep some of these ant colonies can get so if you think about the height of four men right mm. four average men that's seven 
meters. That is pretty deep. That's really, really deep. Okay, so the type of ants that you'll typically find in a colony, what are we looking at? Okay, so there are four uh, main types of ants that you will get in your average colony. Okay, now at the top, you will get the queen. Now she is the leader and the founder of the colony. She is responsible for laying the eggs. Now a single queen can lay thousands of eggs every single day until she dies. Uh, now the queen generally lives a lot, or most of the time lives a lot longer than all the other ants in the, in the colony. She can live to up for up to 30 years. And depending on the species of ant, a colony can be uh, monogamous and have one queen, or they can be a uh, or they can have multiple queens, uh, which is more healthy for their colony because, you see, when the queen ant dies, so does the colony because there's no more uh, eggs being laid, so eventually all the ants die and so the, the entire colony will disappear. But when there are multiple queens, then there's a chance that a new queen could appear and therefore that colony could last hundreds of years if it's possible to, for it to do that. Okay, so when you say the colony dies, so what, what, what exactly does that mean? All the other ants just die or they just disperse uh, and live out their lives? They'll still stay in the colony, but they, they won't be any new ants coming. So every time an ant, they live out the rest of their lives as normal. They'll go out, hunt for food, they'll clean the nest, but there won't be any new ants coming into the picture. So every time an ant dies, it's done. The colony shrinks by that ant and eventually all the ants in the colony will die. Interesting. Okay. Then the second type of ant that you get in a colony will be the drones. Now, the drones are all males. And their only purpose is to mate with the queen, to fertilize the queen. And in, uh, as in most insects, the, uh, they generally die after mating. Now, the drones are very rarely seen outside of the colony. They are bred, they stay underground or in their colonies, they mate with the queen and then they die without having ever seen the light of day. The third species of ant is the most common species of uh, most uh, most common type of ant. It is the worker ants. The worker ants are all female. So all the ants that you see outside, scurrying about, looking for food, the ones that invade your picnics, those are all females. Okay, okay. So those little invaders are all little girl ants. All little girl ants. Okay. All but right. unlike the queen, they don't lay eggs. They are incapable of laying eggs and. Their job is to take care of the nest. So their jobs will be to go out and look for food, to clean and dig uh, new tunnels in the nest, and to care for uh, the little ants, the little baby ants that the, and the eggs that the queen has laid. Okay, but here's the thing. How do these worker ants find our food? I mean, you go to a picnic spot, you, you, you lay out your, your food, and within minutes the ants are there. Whereas, you know, before that, you look, you look around, there's no ants, absolutely no ants. And then suddenly, there's lots of ants. How, how does that work? I mean, is there a short explanation or do we need an, another episode for that? Well, in short, you can say that, firstly, there are a lot of ants, right? So in a square meter, you could get hundreds of ants. So yeah. although you might not see them, but, you know, they'll be hiding in the grass or underneath some dirt. And they have very strong senses. They can smell uh, really well. And once one ant finds the food, he'll go tell all his friends, and then they'll all come uh, oh, one after the other. Okay, like the ant in Suleiman Ali Salam's time. Yeah. Just they go communicate with one another. Call everyone. Maybe they've got some kind of uh, some kind of um, communication that they can do over distances. Mm -hmm. Well, most of the time they communicate by touching their antlers, uh, their little feelers together. Oh, and okay. that's how they transfer messages. Interesting. Okay. And the fourth species of ant, um, not species of ant, the fourth type of ant you get in a colony will be the aelids. Now these are winged uh, males and female ants that uh, once in a while the female will lay. And they don't stay in the colony at all. They fly out and mate and the, they'll mate outside of the colony. The males will die after mating and the Females that survive, that aren't killed by birds and other predatory insects, will then become queens. They'll go dig their own nest, start laying their own eggs, and found new colonies. Interesting, interesting. Now, tell me, ants, right? Hard-working, very, very busy little creatures, but they're also very vicious. Absolutely. I mean, if you've ever been bitten by an ant, you know. And, you know, if you're 
step on and uh, mistakenly step on a on a on a ant hill they'll make you dance right because they they some of the bites are really really uh, painful so how how do ants actually defend themselves and wh- which which ants actually is it the worker ants or is there a special type of ant that actually defends um, the worker ants uh, will do the attacking most of the attacking but if the colony is being invaded by another species of ant then the drones can fight and in some cases if it comes to that the queen will fight to protect her own life now ants attack and defend in two primary ways number one they bite so they have the little pincers and those can be quite painful especially Ouch. in the bigger ants yeah and then you got the their stingers so much like wasps and bees and some species of ants also have stingers and they can sting you with those is that those notorious bullet ants that you get in the amazon yes the bullet the, ants do have stingers and it's they call it a bullet ant because it's as painful as being shot with a bullet some oh, people wow. explain it as <laughs> um but some ants so those are the two primary ways that ants will attack and defend but some ants have a more peculiar way now there's a species of ants that inhabits malaysia and they will fight and defend much like any other ant but when things take a turn for the worst when it's between life and death they will commit suicide by exploding themselves see they got these uh sacs of toxic fluids that uh, run the length of their body and if fighting takes a turn for the worst and you know fighting isn't going to work to protect the colony they will flex those glands so hard that they explode and send this toxic fluid flying all over the place in all directions okay then now that that that's taking this discussion to a completely different level are you telling me that these little ants sacrifice themselves for the colony i mean it's it's amazing it's amazing that what we consider to be dumb little creatures and we squash them right when we uh, you know without thinking so you mean they got that level of concern for each other that they will sacrifice their own lives to protect their colonies yes and if it comes to that they have no problem laying down their lives to make sure that the colony and the majority of the ants can live on Wow that is amazing that is deep and now we're getting a sense of why Allah Taala would name an entire sura maybe it's something that you and I as human beings can learn something from these little ants mm. Okay tell us something more something else interesting about about ants All right so uh ants are very communal creatures obviously they live in colonies um so they have this very big sense of community and you know a way we can see this is in their their hygiene You know they always keep their colonies clean and sanitary because if they don't you can get parasites you can get you know bacterial infections so they'll always be seen grooming themselves firstly you know they'll use their feelers and their legs to groom one another and themselves to make sure they have no parasites and they'll also make sure that the uh, the colony each room in the colony and each tunnel is kept clean now if an ant dies in the colony it's going to start to decompose and thus breed germs so they k- dispose of dead bodies they'll take them out of the colony and drop them somewhere and also food food that they bring back to the nest and if they eat in an insect for example the the shell uh, the exoskeleton of the insect is not going to be digestible to them so they'll eat what they can and the parts that they can't digest they will dispose of So I guess so they, they just suck out all the delicious juices inside the bodies of their victims and uh, just throw the rest out. Okay. They like we throw out bones. Yes, much like how we do that. So that helps to keep the the colony clean, parasite free and bacteria free. Now, a really amazing thing about ants. This this just amazes me every time I come across it. Certain ants have learned how to or are taught how to farm. they are actually mini little farmers in two sense number one you got the leaf cutter ant now the leaf cutter ant is not called a leaf cutter ant because it eats leaves but what it does is it cuts leaves and it drags it back to its colony where it chews it mixes it with its saliva and spits it out and then it plants these little mushroom spores or these fungal spores in that uh, in that fluid that they just created and that helps to cultivate and grow their own crops their own mushroom their own fungal crops so they grow mushrooms they grow mushrooms they to make they pizza <laughs> <laughs> so, so you mean these ants actually make fertilizer 
plant their seeds on that fertilizer and then they harvest crops and they eat those crops exactly wow alhamdulillah exactly. this is this is uh, next level stuff i mean i've got a new found respect for ants now some ants farm that way they like they in agriculture and others a herders they learned how to herd other creatures like a few species of ant they farm aphids aphids are these little tiny little creatures you find like on flowers and things and the ants will protect these aphids so they'll make sure that no other creature uh, will harm these aphids then they allow these aphids to eat on the flowers and they feed on the sweet little uh, drops that essentially the, the excrement of the uh, the aphids they feed on it it's a sweet nectar kind of uh, tasting thing that they eat and they'll either wait for the aphids to excrete it naturally or in some cases the ants were seen actually milking the aphids by rubbing them with their antennas okay like we'd milk a cow like we milk a cow but wow this is so interesting i mean Here we've got creatures that we think to be little no, no, nothing more than little dumb bugs but here they they're farming uh they 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 doing crop production they're doing uh farming of animals they're keeping these aphids they're milking them for food and none of this is random i mean there's no way that uh you know we can explain all of this by saying it happened by chance this is definitely You can see Allah Ta'ala's hand in this. Allah Ta'ala educated these little creatures in that tiny 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 little brains of theirs. There's something going on that actually uh you know there's there's uh, there's information, there's there's knowledge, there's ways of doing things. Okay, this episode is actually gone a, a bit longer, well much longer than most of our uh, other episodes, but I think we haven't even begun to uh, scratch the surface of uh of the amazing life of ants. So what I suggest is let's do this. Let's make a couple more episodes about ants and um, and and discuss them in more detail. But uh, for now with this episode that's a that's a wrap and uh, I I I hope that our listeners actually uh learned as much and have you know, gotten a new a uh, newfound respect for ants that I did mm-hmm. and also um, a lot more admiration for Allah Ta'ala's creation what amazing little creatures he's he's created here there's so much going on right there in our gardens that we don't even know about entire ant colonies that are doing some amazing things that uh, we we are totally unaware of but uh, now we know okay so that's a wrap assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh